Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests, before I begin, I want to share a piece of advice with you from my mom. I was in second grade, about to give my first presentation ever, and I was a little bit nervous. She said, honey, all you have to do is imagine everyone in their underwear, and then you won't be nervous. <laughs> so actually, I'm using that tonight because I have about half of you undressed. Trey, I'm still kind of struggling with you. Steve, I'm going to skip you since Brenda's sitting right next to you. Let's see, so if you'll just give me a couple of seconds, let me go ahead and get everybody else. Take all your clothes off. Scotty, got you. Okay, good. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm the only one who can actually see your underwear. So in addition, in addition to being, to giving me wonderful advice, my mom was also my biggest supporter. She always told me I could be anything I wanted to be as long as I put my mind to it. So what did I want to be? I wanted to be a famous singer. I thought it would be so cool to stand on stage and sing and dance in front of thousands of people, have assistants following me everywhere I go, fixing my hair, doing my makeup, listening to myself come out of the radio as my driver is driving me around town, having fans fight over my autograph, having photographers taking my picture every time I stepped out of my house. Yep, that's what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, I never actually stopped to check to see if I actually had the talent to back that up. <laughs> Sure, I did my fair share of singing in the shower, singing in the car. I even sang with family and friends. In fact, my cousins and I would tape record ourselves singing songs, and then we'd go back and play them for our grandparents. Of course, my grandparents loved them. They always encouraged us, girls, y'all are doing such a great job. Y'all are really, really good. You should pursue this kind of thing. So I was always encouraged growing up. I grew up in Houston, uh, lived in Houston most of my life. Right before sixth grade, we moved to a suburb just north of Houston, and I had to go to a new school. Well, at this new school, sixth graders were required to take either band or art. Seems like the logical choice for me would be to take band, right? Well, I had never actually played an instrument, except for the little recorders in music class, and I wasn't real good at the whole keeping a beat thing. <laughs> so I thought, you know, I'm going to be a singer. I really don't need to waste my time with all this instrumental stuff. So I go to art. Well, the first day, the first assignment in art class was to draw an apple. Pretty easy, huh? I mean, how hard is it to draw an apple? Not very hard, except, I mean, everybody in the class wasn't hard for them, but it was hard for me. I was the only student who could not draw an apple on the first day. So the next day, I marched into band class with my mom's old clarinet in tow. Gave up art. Took band the rest of the year, and actually I did pretty well. I was first chair about half the time, second or third chair the other half, which is a good thing. And it further confirmed the notion that I was definitely headed for a career in music. So I finished out high school, go to college, thought I might as well get an education just in case I ever get tired of the whole singing gig. Well, my first year in college, I lived in a dorm, had a roommate, and my dorm room was about the size of the bathrooms here, just a little box with enough room for two twin beds on each side. Well, one spring day I was cleaning up our little abode, singing along to a song on the radio when my roommate comes home. She kind of gives me an interesting look when she walks in the door. We say our hellos and then we go about our business. Well, it didn't bother me at all that I was singing fairly loud and she was in the room because after all, I was really, really good. <laughs> so by this time, I'm belting out the lyrics, having a grand old time. My roommate finally turns around and says, Jennifer, are you trying to sing in harmony, or are you just that bad? What is harmony? I had no idea what <laughs> harmony was, what she was talking about, or what I was doing differently to sing in harmony versus just singing the song. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention is she was in band at UT, so she knew a little bit of something about music. <laughs> so I thought, well, that's odd. I mean, I've always been encouraged. I've always gotten really good feedback. Then I reflected on the source of that feedback. My mom, my dad, my grandparents. So I thought, my God, maybe I'm really not good. So I decided to actually listen to myself. And I mean really, really listen. Turns out, I am absolutely horrible. I cannot carry a tune in a bucket, and I can't believe someone didn't tell me that sooner. So, guess, lucky for me, I was still in college, so I decided to go ahead and pursue a different career that was actually very similar, accounting. <laughs> so I got my master's in accounting, I went on to get my CPA, and I worked for a big five accounting firm the first year out of college. 
I did that for a couple of years until I was bored to tears. Then I decided I wanted to do real estate investing. Did that a couple of years also until I ran out of money. So then I thought, well, maybe I'll, I'll go into the restaurant industry. I'm getting paid to drink wine and eat good food. I have no idea why I left that job. But I did leave it and I went to Apple Computer, which is actually where I am today. Maybe not tomorrow, but I'm there today. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I had an epiphany that I should have gone to law school. So I have no idea where I'll end up, but I thought that along the way, I might as well learn how to speak, and that's why I'm here. So I appreciate all of you sitting there half naked. <laughs> it's really, really helped me out a lot tonight. Madam Toastmaster.